The Life of Kisuke Urahara from Bleach Kisuke Urahara is the former captain of the 12th Division, as well as the founder and first president of the SRDI. His lieutenant was Hiyori Sarugaki. He lives in the human world where he owns a small convenience store which sells Shinigami items. He's assisted by his employees Tessa Sukabishi, Jinta Hanakari, and Ururu Sumugiya. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Kisuke Urahara. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, do us a big favor and double check that you are indeed still subscribed to the Amagi. We've noticed that some people are unsubscribed without actually doing so lately. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Urahara grew up at the Shihoin Mansion in Serete with his childhood friends Yoroichi Shihoin and Tessai Sukabishi. He joined the Gotei 13 around the same time Yoroichi joined the Onmitsukido, and eventually became the third seat of the second division, which was intertwined with the Onmitsukido. As part of his duties as one of the top five seated officers, Urahara became head of the Onmitsukido's detention unit. Approximately 110 years later, a 12th division captain, Kirio Hikifune, was promoted to the Royal Guard, and Yoroichi recommended Urahara as her replacement. Urahara was told of this by Yoroichi after a sparring session. After being informed, Kisuke wanted to prepare for the upcoming captain's ability test. Urahara spent the day wandering around the Soul Society, interacting with the citizens as he sought information on Shinigami defectors. Returning to the 2nd Division headquarters as he was talking with Yoroichi, Soifan arrived and reported negatively on Urahara's activities. They were interrupted by the arrival of a Division member who reported the people Urahara had been looking for had been found. Yoroichi told Urahara to hurry off with his duties and sent Soifan to help prepare for the captain's proficiency test. Urahara and his men proceeded to the remote area where defectors were hiding. Urahara, telling his men to wait, entered the building by himself and single-handedly defeated all the defectors with Hakuda before moving on to his test. After successfully passing his exam, which was overseen by Genryusai Shigekuna Yamamoto, Retsu Unohana, and Ginrei Kukichi, he became the captain of the 12th Division, and gained Hikifune's lieutenant, Hiyori Sarugaki, as his own. Later that day, Urahara formally introduced himself to the 12th Division. He encountered some resistance from Hiyori, who, refusing to accept him, cited her displeasure with Captain Hikifune's sudden departure and his status as a former 2nd Division member. Urahara, laughing it off, told her he had already been made the captain of the 12th Division and that he decided that this was the role he would play from then on. He was no longer a member of the 2nd Division and if she had a problem, it was hers to change. He already proceeded to kick him in the crotch, which did not affect him at all. The following night, Captain Shinji Hirako approached Urahara telling him why Hiyori was giving him problems, and then gave him advice on how to best go about being a captain. He stated he could tell Urahara was not the type who does what other people tell him. Shinji explained that he felt Urahara was a type just like him, so he should just meddle in his own business. At a division meeting, Urahara explained that he had decided to change the policy of the 12th division, but had yet to determine what course of action he thought would be a good role for them. Hiyori, becoming increasingly angry upon hearing he was still thinking about it, attacked him. She challenged him to a fight, which he accepted on the condition that they fight unarmed. Hiyori tried to kick him in the face, but Urahara showed her he could evade the attack. However, he allowed her to hit him so as not to embarrass her in front of the other division members. The following morning, Hiyori, arriving at the captain's chamber, became enraged at how Urahara had changed the room from its former state. As he tried to calm her down, she attacked him again. Brushing it aside, he asked her to accompany him to the Nest of Maggots. On the way to the Nest of Maggots, Urahara explained to her about the detention unit, what happens to those under its jurisdiction, and the function of the Nest of Maggots. Inside the facility, Urahara told her those detained within here could not leave, but they were still free within the facility. He warned her to be careful as the inmates could become violent. Urahara explained that though the people in the facility were possibly dangerous, he had always felt, given a suitable outlet, they could channel their power into something more productive. When one of the inmates tried to attack Hiyori, Urahara stopped him barehanded, noting that weapons were not permitted within the facility. This prompted the other inmates to attack, but Urahara easily took out all his attackers. Afterwards, the pair went to the cell of Mayori Kurotsuchi, whom Urahara asked if he wanted to leave the Nest of Maggots to join him in the 12th Division. Urahara explained that in his capacity as the captain of the 12th Division, he had decided to make an organization, the Shinigami Research and Development Institute, and he wanted him to be its vice president. 
Nine years later, Urahara was told by Shinji and Lieutenant Sosuke Aizen about a series of strange disappearances that had taken place in Rukongai, and that the 9th Division was investigating. Urahara later set about making a new type of Gigai to stabilize the disappearing souls. While explaining this to Hiyori, they were interrupted by the arrival of Toto Izeman, who relayed Captain Kensei Mugoruma's requests that a researcher be sent to the investigation site. Urahara persuaded a reluctant Hiyori to carry out the task. Later that night, when he hears that the Ryatsu of the investigation team had disappeared, Urahara, hurrying to the lab, asked a researcher where Hiyori was. When he said Hiyori had already left, he rushed back out and arrived late at an emergency captain's meeting. Fearing for her safety, Urahara requested to go to the site himself, but was denied by Captain Commander Yamamoto. Urahara later decided to go anyway, using a new kind of Ryatsu concealing cloak to hide himself. Urahara was spotted by Tessai Sukabishi, who joined him in the search. They arrived just in time to stop Aizen from killing Captain Hiroko. Urahara questioned Aizen about what he was doing there, rejecting his initial explanation. Urahara noted there were no injuries on the victims, and that they were infected with holification. When Aizen tried to leave with his two henchmen, Tessai used a high-level Kido spell against them, forcing Urahara to duck out of the way. However, the three suspects managed to escape. After Aizen and his followers got away, the duo tended to Shinji and the rest of the victims, who were deep in the process of holification. Urahara said he could possibly help them at his lab, so Tessai used a forbidden Kido to transport them there. In his lab, Urahara tried to reverse the process using an item he had created, the Hogyoku. However, it did not have the effect Urahara expected. The following morning, Urahara and Tessai were arrested and brought before the Central 46. They were swiftly tried with little opportunity to defend themselves. Urahara was sentenced to be stripped of his Shinigami powers and exiled to the human world. However, before the sentence could be carried out, he and Tessai were rescued by Yoruichi, who led them to a secret underground area. There she berated him for keeping her out of the loop, then explained that she had brought the eight holified Shinigami and the prototype Gigai that Urahara had been working on. Urahara resolved to make Ryatsu concealing Gigai to help himself, Tessai, and the eight holified victims escaped the human world, where they unsuccessfully tried to find a way to undo the holification process. At some point, Urahara established his store in the human world and became acquainted with Kukaku Shiba. One day, during his time in the human world, Kisuke walked by Masuki Kurosaki as she started to feel faint on her way home from school, to which he noticed. Later, Kisuke appeared before Ishin Shiba, captain of the 10th division, and the Quincy Ryuken Ishida, who were arguing about the condition of the unconscious Masaki, who had developed a hollow-like hole after being injured by one in a recent fight. He stopped their quarreling by telling them he could help save Masaki. At his shop, Urahara introduced himself and identified Masaki's condition to be hollification. He explained that it is irreversible and that the only way to stabilize it is to insert a part of the soul from something opposite of the species at hand, and that it worked for all of the other victims of this condition he tested the method with. After Ryoken accused him of lying, he stated that this wasn't Ryoken's choice. He then said that to save Masaki, Ishin must enter a Gigai that would attach its soul to Masaki's. In doing so, Ishin would be unable to return to his Shinigami form so long as Masaki was alive. Ishin quickly agreed to this solution, which surprised Urahara and Ryoken. After listening to Ishin's resolve, Urahara began working on the solution. Ultimately, the operation was a success. Later, Kisuke helped Ishin establish his new life in the human world. Agent of the Shinigami Arc After Rukia Kuchiki gives all of her powers to Ichigo Kurosaki, Urahara gives her a special, untraceable Gigai of his own design, which is meant to slowly drain Rukia's Ryatsu and transform her into a human, permanently hiding the Hogyoku within her. Several days later, he welcomes Rukia to his store and tells her they have just received a shipment of goods from Soul Society. Rukia buys some maintenance material for her Gigai, despite Urahara's warning about its health effects. After Rukia declines an offer on an overhaul of the Gigai, Urahara asks about payment, and Rukia hands her Denreishiki to him planning to pay with bounty points. Urahara finds that she's received 5,000 kan for the defeat of Shrieker. Urahara, telling her that her package has arrived, sends Ururu to fetch it, who returns and presents a Gigonkan dispenser to Rukia. Urahara later discovers that Ururu brought the wrong box, which contains kan. Stopping Jinta from punishing Ururu, he says that it's his fault for not disposing of it. Ururu, blaming herself, apologizes and asks him if he's mad. Urahara, comforting her, says that they are a team and he will take care of it. The four set out to recover Khan. When they find him, Urahara removes the mod soul from Ichigo's body and proceeds to take back the faulty merchandise. Rukia, snatching Khan back, says he is not defective and she's happy with the merchandise. Urahara states that they will deny any involvement or affiliation if there's any trouble with him. He later erases the memories of Khan and the trouble he caused from the minds of people who were confronted by him. 
Kisuke accompanies Tessai, Jinta, and Ururu to the abandoned hospital where Don Kananji is filming his TV show. When Ichigo and Rukia are restrained by the security personnel, Kisuke, transforming Ichigo into his Shinigami form, tells him not to be distracted by dealing with the Earthbound Plus. When Rukia asks what he's scheming, Urahara states he brought Uru and Jinta to see the filming as they love Don Kananji's show, and that he ran over when he heard Rukia's shrieks. Kisuke, watching Ichigo's progress from the crowd, states it's both wonderful and terrible, just as he had thought, and ponders what should be done. When Ichigo drags Kananji inside the hospital to draw the hollow attacking them away from the crowd, Hisuke muses that he does fight as he had thought. Sometime later, Rukia shows up at the Urahara shop, irate that Kisuke had not answered her calls. He apologizes, saying that they've been busy and the store has been often left empty. Rukia asks about the Quincy, which surprises him. Saying he has not heard of them for a long time, he proceeds to reveal their history to Rukia. After noticing the increasing amount of hollows appearing in Karakura Town, Rukia rushes off and Urahara goes in to attend to other business. When Orihime Inoue collapses after using her newly awakened Shunshun Rika, Urahara arrives on the scene with Tessai, who is carrying Yasutora Sato. Bringing the pair into the shop, Urahara tells them what's been happening, talks about the power that's awoken within them, and explains its connection to Ichigo. Trying to ease their fears and tension, Urahara states that they have a choice now where there was none, and it's up to them to choose to act or not. They're interrupted by Tessai, who states the Kumon has begun its convergence, noting the preparations are complete. Urahara asks Orihime and Sado to come along, as he wishes to show them the world they're about to enter and the enemies they must fight. Upon their arrival, Urahara instructs Ichigo to focus on the Gillian-class Menos Grande, which is about to force its way through the crack in the sky. As Rukia attempts to assist, Urahara stops her interference with a binding spell, telling her the battle will be important to both of them. After the battle, Urahara asks Tessai to repair the crack in the sky. The next day, Yoroichi visits Urahara and they discuss the Shinigami chasing Rukia. When the Shinigami attempt to capture Rukia, Urahara frees Ichigo's Shinigami form from his body so he can fight Rukia's pursuers, and in the process show Ichigo how little a chance he has in fighting against them. Following Ichigo's defeat, Urahara heals both Uryo Ishida and Ichigo, taking Ichigo to his shop due to the extent of his injuries. Urahara gives him an opportunity to go to the Soul Society under one condition. He must train with him for 10 days to fight properly. Urahara knocks an impatient Ichigo to the ground, saying that if he were to go in his current condition, Ichigo would be as good as dead. He further notes that with his current skill, he wouldn't stand a chance in the Soul Society. Urahara states the Soul Society commonly gives a one-month grace period before carrying out executions. He notes it will take 10 days to train him and a further 7 days to open the door to the Soul Society, giving Ichigo 13 days in Soul Society to save Rukia. He gives Ichigo a special medicine to quickly heal his wounds. The next day, the fully healed Ichigo begins his training with Urahara, who takes him to the training area underneath his shop. Urahara, separating Ichigo's soul from his body, has Ururu battle him so Ichigo can regain some of his speed. Urahara has Tessai cut off Ichigo's soul chain and sends them into a large hole in the ground which will speed up Ichigo's encroachment, forcing Ichigo to reacquire his Shinigami powers before he becomes a hollow. Three days, he, Jinta, and Ururu watch as Ichigo begins to transform into a hollow and are surprised at the amount of resistance he has. After Ichigo awakens his Shinigami powers, Urahara begins his third test, which is to knock Urahara's hat off his head. Urahara, initiating his Shikai, easily overwhelms Ichigo. When Ichigo learns his Zanpakuto's name, Zangetsu, he fires a powerful energy blast at Urahara who blocks with his Shikai's shield, though it still knocks off his hat. Urahara, admitting Ichigo is a scary kid, states he has passed test 3. Two days later, Urahara summons Ichigo, Uryu, Orihime, and Sato to his shop in the middle of the night. Urahara begins to form a Senkaimon, a tunnel to the Soul Society. Urahara explains to Ichigo, Orihime, Chad, and Uryu the details of what the gate does and what to expect from its use. When Ichigo and his companions are gone, Urahara touches the Senkaimon which repels his hand. He notes it is now up to Ichigo. Soul Society Arc once Ichigo and company return, Urahara gathers the group on a flying piece of paper and transports them all home. Revealing his involvement in placing the Hogyoku within the soul of Rukia, he says he knowingly did not tell them that because he thought it would make them change their minds about saving her. Removing his hat, he apologizes to them for his actions. After receiving an elbow to the face by Ichigo, he promises to apologize to Rukia. Arankar Arc one night, Urahara stands in front of his shop, expressing concern about what is going on in Karakura Town when Yoroichi approaches him. When the Espada, Ukiora, Schiffer, and Yami Largo attack, Urahara and Yoroichi save Ichigo from Yami. Urahara, nullifying Yami's Zero, attacks him, but Ukiora deflects the attack and the two Arankar retreat. Sometime later, Chad asks Urahara to train him. Urahara eventually decides to have Renji train him, saying his Bankai is not fit for training or lending powers to others. 
Urahara, observing their training, muses on how fighting against a Bankai will increase Chad's powers, and expresses concern about the nature of Chad's powers. Shortly after, Urahara sends Yoroichi to bring Orohime to him. When Orohime arrives, he shares with her the details of the coming war between Soul Society and Aizen as they watch Renji and Chad battle. He asks her to stay out of the upcoming battle, because with Tsubaki having been destroyed by Yami, she has no means of attack, and thus should not participate in the battle. Chad disagrees, saying she helped in Soul Society and her healing and defensive abilities are more important than attacking. Urahara reminds him that Orihime is still a human, and that the 4th Division will be on the front line, as they possess both healing and combat abilities. Orihime, agreeing with Urahara, thanks him for being honest with her. During another Arankar incursion, Urahara saves Lieutenant Rengiku Matsumoto from being impaled by Lupi and Tenor. After introducing himself, he's attacked by Wonderwise Margella, only to bat the Arankar away with a blast of spiritual energy from his Zanpakuto. Wonderwise fires a Bala at him, something Urahara has never seen before. Yemi fires a volley of Bala at him from above, but Urahara, using a portable Gigai to evade the attack, taunts him. Urahara, easily dodging another attack, appears behind Yami, holding his Zanpakuto to the Espada's throat. He explains that since he saw him fire off tons of those blasts, he will not be hit by them anymore. Urahara shows him the portable Gigai he used as decoy. Enraged, Yami begins to fire a Bala, but Urahara, effortlessly negating the blast, reveals he has analyzed the Bala's spirit particle composition and Yami's muscle movements, allowing him to cancel the attack. Before they can continue to battle, Okiora successfully captures Orihime, allowing Yami to escape back to Hoikomundo. Hueco Mundo arc. After Orihime is captured by Aizen's forces, Urahara finds Uryu in Karakura Hospital's secret training ground. He informs Uryu about the event and tells him to leave the hospital once he agrees to help. Before leaving, Urahara takes him to a hidden storehouse where they find a few seal Schneider. Later that day, while explaining to Ichigo how Orihime's capture was something he holds himself responsible for due to being careless with her physical and emotional well being, Urahara opens a garganta for Ichigo, Chad, and Uryu so they can enter Hueco Mundo and rescue Orihime. After their departure, Urahara reveals he is aware of the presence of Ichigo's three friends, and that he left the store unlocked so they could enter. Shortly afterwards, Rukia and Renji arrive from Soul Society, and Urahara opens a garganta for them. Around this time, Urahara is given orders by Captain Commander Genryusai Shigekuna Yamamoto. These include creating a garganta to allow humans to enter Hueco Mundo, and making preparations for the coming war by making it possible for the Gote 13 to battle in Karakura Town. He accomplishes this by creating a device called the Tenkai Ketchu, which allows him to swap the real Karakura Town with an elaborate duplicate made by the 12th Division. Fake Karakura Town Arc As Sosuke Aizen reveals the true nature of the Hogyoku, Urahara attacks him from behind with Jugaki Byakurai, piercing Aizen's shoulder. Urahara, noting the unusual form Aizen has taken, states Aizen has fused with the Hogyoku. Aizen replies that it is not fusion, but rather subjugation of the Hogyoku, which Urahara had failed to master. Urahara glaring down at Aizen admits it's true that he was unable to master it in the past. Aizen tries to attack him, but Urahara, using a portable Gigai as a decoy, uses the opportunity to bind Aizen with multiple Kido spells. Urahara attacks with Senju Koten Taiho, but Aizen, appearing behind him unharmed, slashes his shoulder. Aizen tells Urahara there is no need for him to be on guard, as the Hogyoku is strengthening his abilities. Urahara states he was not talking about dodging the Kido, but rather that in the past, Aizen would have never come into physical contact with him twice without a plan. Urahara reveals he placed seals on Aizen to block off the Reiatsu vents which all Shinigami have in their wrists. As Aizen is enveloped in a column of light, Urahara tells him he'll be incinerated by his own Reiatsu from the inside out. However, Aizen emerges unscathed and further transformed, commenting that Urahara used a level 90 Kido as a decoy while placing the seal. Aizen states the Hogyoku Urahara created was beyond his comprehension. Urahara attacks Aizen as Ishin comes at him from behind, but he easily blocks both of their attacks. However, there is revealed to be yet another trap as Urahara and Ishin have entangled Aizen, forcing him into an awkward position. As Aizen demands to know what's going on, Yoroichi, wearing armor developed by Urahara, attacks Aizen from above. Urahara yells for Yoroichi to move away as Aizen quickly recovers. After Urahara and Yoroichi get into two minor, playful arguments about the quality of the armor, Aizen states that it's all part of Urahara's plan. Urahara replies that he thought Aizen was no longer cautious, but Aizen counters, saying it's just an observation, as Urahara is the only being within Soul Society whose intellect surpasses his own, and he still has interest in him. Urahara, stating he's only a humble candy maker, fires an Okasen spell. Yoroichi, Urahara, and Ishin take turns attacking Aizen, but Aizen soon defeats the trio. Later, Urahara arrives outside the real Karakura town after Ichigo uses his final Getsuga Tensho against Aizen, who has just realized his body is being affected by some sort of Kido. 
Urahara explains that before he achieved complete transformation, in Aizen's most unguarded moment, he fired that Kido into his body on the back of another Kido. Urahara reveals it's a seal specifically designed for Aizen, as he figured that if he fused the Hogyoku, it would most likely become all but impossible to kill him. As the seal begins to take hold and the power Aizen obtained from the Hogyoku begins to fade, Urahara states Aizen's loss of power is the will of the Hogyoku. He explains that the seal began to work because his power was weakened and that the Hogyoku no longer sees him as its master. Aizen asks why somebody of Urahara's intellect allows himself to be controlled by that thing. Urahara understands Aizen is referring to the Soul King, realizing he's seen it. He tells Aizen that it's the linchpin and without its existence, Soul Society would be rent asunder. Aizen is sealed within Urahara's Kido, the ultimate seal of destruction. Later, Ichigo asks Urahara where everyone went, to which Urahara replies that they went home. He further states that it seems as though they wanted to speak with him, but coming over and talking to him seemed like an equally difficult task to all of them. Ichigo asked if he wiped their memories, but Urahara tells him he did not this time. Urahara reveals Aizen's seal structure was transported to Serete, and the details of his disposal will be immediately decided by the Central 46 Chambers. Ichigo gets a solemn look on his face, prompting Urahara to ask why. Ichigo states he does not really know himself, causing Urahara to remind him that he risked his life protecting the world and everyone's lives, and defeated Aizen. He further states that Ichigo did the right thing. Ichigo recounts his thoughts about Aizen to Urahara. After Ichigo collapses, Urahara explains the loss of Ichigo's Shinigami powers to Rukia. The Lost Substitute Shinigami Arc Following Aizen's defeat, Urahara's life returns to normal, though he is no longer a wanted criminal by Soul Society. To deal with her growing spiritual powers, Karin Kurosaki begins regularly coming to Urahara's shop for assistance. As Karin is leaving with the materials she bought on one such visit, Kisuke unsuccessfully tries to sell her extra items. When she offers to pay, he refuses, saying he owes Ichigo a lot and asks how Ichigo is and Karin's feelings as well. After she answers, he tells her to let him know if anything were to happen, and he'll prepare something. Sometime later, Urahara is seen by Ichigo meeting up with Ishin in an alley. However, they both move away before Ichigo can learn the purpose of their meeting. Later at Urahara shop, Urahara, finishing with something, says it's the last one and asks if Ishin is sure. Ishin says he's getting annoying, asking how many times Urahara needs to ask that. Urahara replies it's a matter of whether or not a parent robs his son of his future, so it's common sense to confirm it several times. Ishin says he knows, and he is sure. Urahara says they will make their final move, and an unidentified figure stepping forth tells Urahara to do it. Later, Urahara walks with Ishin, who is carrying a glowing sword through the moonlit streets. They reach Ichigo shortly after he loses his full bring, and Urahara witnesses Rukia stabbing Ichigo with the glowing sword. Having earlier traveled to Soul Society, where he explained the situation to Captain Commander Yamamoto, the sword had been infused with the Riatsu of all the captains and lieutenants of the Gotei 13 upon Yamamoto's order. Urahara donated some of his Riatsu as well. When Orihime and Chad start to break from Tsukishima's ability, Urahara and Ishin knock the two out. Urahara, catching Orihime, remarks it was easy to knock them out since Tsukishima loosened them up, thanking him. He and Ishin bring them to his shop, and after Tsukishima is defeated, they become stable. Urahara decides to return to where the battle is taking place, telling Ishin to remain behind. He acknowledges Ishin's concern that Ichigo will learn the truth, stating Ichigo is bound to learn it eventually. Urahara, arriving at Tsukishima's mansion, finds Rurika as the only full bringer who remained there. He brings Ichigo and company, along with Rurika, to his shop. Some time later, Urahara brings Rurika breakfast, but finding she has left, instead offers the meal to Jinta. The Thousand Year Blood War Arc As Ichigo and his friends discuss the abduction of Arankar, including Dondo Chaka from Hueco Mundo and Pesci with Nel 2, Urahara, appearing at Ichigo's window, offers to arrange their entry to Hueco Mundo. While Urahara leads Ichigo and the others through the Garganta, Ichigo asks how he arrived at such a convenient time. Urahara jokes about having waited outside of his window until the opportune time. He states the amount of unusual activity recently has put him on alert, saying that it's all connected and is not a trivial manner. They arrive in Hueco Mundo to find ruined buildings and the sand itself burning. Urahara listens as Pesci reveals the blue flames are created by the enemy's use of condensed reishi. Ichigo goes to save the Arankar who have been captured, leaving Urahara to wonder if he realizes he's going to help those who were recently his enemy. As Ichigo fights Kilge Opi, Urahara and Pesci rescue Dondo Chaka. While running, they argue about how long it took them because Ichigo and Kilge are already fighting all out. Urahara stops, distracted by something behind them. A short while later, Urahara receives a call from Akon, who asks to speak to Ichigo. However, Urahara tells him it's impossible because of the ongoing fight. Informing Akon of the situation and how he was unaware of the trouble in Soul Society, he watches as Ichigo surpasses Kilge in battle. Eventually, Urahara uses an opening to step in and defeat him. Urahara, opening a Senkaimon, tells Ichigo to proceed to Soul Society immediately. As he sets about analyzing the details of Ichigo's battle with Kilge, 
Urahara asks Orihime and Sado to recover Kyogei's Bankai stealing medallion from his body. Joining Ichigo and Akon's conversation, he begins to provide details of the Quincy's abilities. He notes the Vandenreich have waited until Ichigo could not enter Soul Society in order to attack, and for that reason, it's important he goes there. He states he'll soon follow him there. However, he's then attacked by Kyogei, who is using his Ranso Tengai. Urahara states he was careless to think that Kyogei could not move with the injuries he had sustained. Later on, when Kyogei attempts to get rid of Urahara, Orihime, and Sado, Kyogei is cut in two by an unidentified individual. A surprised and wounded Urahara quickly finds himself with a blade to his head. Later, Urahara sends a message to Soul Society that he, Sado, and Orihime are fine. Through modifications he had made in Khan's plushy body, Urahara contacts Ichigo in Soul Society. When someone outside demands to see Ichigo, Urahara frantically tells Orihime and Chad to keep them out. After assuring Ichigo that the said individual is no danger to them thanks to an agreement they made, he insists Ichigo not worry about them, but instead worry about what he needs to do on his end. After Urahara ends the communications, Sato voices his concern about how Ichigo will take Urahara's words. Urahara reassures Sato that Ichigo will protect everyone, and not to say things he doesn't believe in. Later, when learning that Ichigo was sent back to the human world after fighting the Vandenreich and then meeting the Royal Guard, Urahara informs Ishin. Much later, he welcomes Orihime and Chad into the Negal ruins, where he comments that the next stage will probably take some time. At some point, he meets with Riruka Dokugamine and Yukio Hans Voralburna, whose powers he uses to create a box within the Valley of Screams that can move between dimensions. During the Vandenreich's second invasion of Soul Society, Urahara calls Mayuri via transmitter and informs him that he has found a way to recover the stolen Bankai. Urahara then comes into the SRDI through a Senkaimon and asks Mayuri to cooperate. While the SRDI is trying to use the Tentekura to communicate with the captains and lieutenants in battle, Urahara reveals a small black pill called Shin Iyaku to Mayuri. Urahari then explains that an Arankara's Resurrection is similar to a Shinigami's Bankai, and as such, they should be able to take an Arankara's Resurrection as well. Mayuri concludes that either a Resurrection can't be stolen, or stealing one would lead to a demerit. The SRDI announces that they connected the Tentakura to the captains and lieutenants, and Urahara sends them the Shinyaku, explaining to the captains and lieutenants that only those who have achieved Bankai would be able to use them, and instructs them to touch them to activate the pill's effect. Mayuri then tells Urahara that he suspects that the grudge the Quincy carry towards the Hollows isn't due to tradition, but due to primordial fear of something that threatens their lives, which Urahara confirms. He then explains that everything regarding a Hollow is like poison to a Quincy, and that if they are eroded by a Hollow, their own souls would be destroyed, and as such, a Quincy would not be able to survive Hollowfication. Additionally, Urahara explains that the Shin Iyaku will briefly Hollowfy a Shinigami's Bankai, causing it to become poison towards a Quincy. Urahara and Mayuri watch the events unfold, both of them stuck on what to do. Urahara then receives a phone call to his surprise from Ichigo. When Ichigo tells him it'll take some time for him to reach the Serete, Urahara states that he understands and tells Ichigo to be careful. When Ichigo tells him to resist until he arrives even if the fight gets tough, Urahara smiles and confirms this before saying they're waiting for Ichigo. The following day, after Yuhuak, Jugram Hashwalf, and Uryu depart for the Soul King Palace, Urahara appears before Ichigo, Orihime, and Sado and prepares to transport Ichigo back to the Soul King Palace. Soon afterwards, Urahara brings the group to the basement of the 12th Division, where Mayuri has built a replica of Kukaku Shiba's cannon. He explains that Mayuri predicted something like this would happen and admits the latter is genius, though Urahara himself surpasses this, while explaining how the original cannon is unique technology that cannot be easily imitated. When Urahara reveals that the copy will break with one shot, Ichigo expresses shock, prompting Urahara to state he simply will not miss. As Urahara notes the tremendous amount of energy needed to fire the cannon, Akon informs him that his guest has finished their preparations. After commenting on Orihime's outfit, Urahara welcomes Yoruichi and asks her what happened, prompting Yoruichi to reveal a set of bottles underneath her cloak. Urahara reveals that the Vandenreich created the distortion between the two worlds, and explains how a quantity of energy large enough to connect the two worlds was created when the distortion vanished before revealing that Yoruichi joined Hiyori's team and collected this energy in case it was necessary. Stating that he was sure someone had already built the cannon, Urahara tells Ichigo and his friends to prepare to go to the Soul King Palace. Soon afterward, Urahara prepares to fire the cannon while pretending he cannot hear Ichigo's complaints about the noise. However, they're interrupted by the arrival of Ganju Shiba, who has brought an aerial map required for them to make it to the palace. After telling Ichigo he has planned for everything, Urahara fires the cannon, sending Ichigo and his friends flying towards the palace. 
Later, Urahara draws a line in the ground outside before being greeted by Hiyori, who has arrived alongside the rest of the Vizards from the human world. When Urahara reveals that he already sent Yoroichi to the palace, Hiyori berates him for seemingly not caring if Ichigo and Yoroichi die as long as they slow down the enemy. However, they're interrupted by the arrival of Yushiro Shihoin, who has brought several items for his sister to use. When Yushiro begins to cry over Yoroichi having already left, Urahara consoles him by claiming that it was for the sake of the Serete before stating that what he brought will still be of use to them. Later, when more Shinigami arrive at the laboratory he had appropriated, Urahara relays the status of various divisions to Shinji, who asks him what he intends to do once all the available captains and lieutenants have arrived. Urahara reveals he intends to break into the Soul King Palace, shocking those present, before explaining how it should be possible with the aid of the heavenly armor which Yushiro brought, the pedestal that Mayori created, and a huge amount of spiritual energy generated by all the captains. Soon afterward, Shinji informs Urahara that the medical operation has been completed. When Kenpachi Zaraki emerges and asks him where Yachiru Kusajishi is, Urahara informs him that the rest of the 11th division is searching for her before asking him to stay here. Kenpachi attempts to leave only for Urahara to stop him with a Kido barrier before explaining how he cannot have Kenpachi out there. After Nanao Issei calms Kenpachi down and convinces him to leave the search to the rest of the division, Urahara hands out spheres to the other Shinigami present, whom he instructs to charge the spheres with the Ryatsu as the ceiling opens. When Hiyori arrives and pours a strange liquid on the floor of the pedestal, Rukia notices she does not feel wet, prompting Urahara to reveal it is the energy collected from the distortions in the human world and that it will fuel their travel. After telling the Vizard to put on the Shihaku show in the medical room, Urahara explains how charging the orbs of the Ryatsu will create doors to the Soul King Palace before admitting that there may not be a way back. However, Soifang admonishes him for thinking they would back down upon learning this, as Ukitake and Kenpachi express similar sentiments, prompting Urahara to smile before stating they will go. Soon afterward, when Ichigo is tricked into killing the Soul King, Urahara notices the ceiling of the laboratory crumbling and realizes that the Soul King has died. Shinji demands to know how this could have happened with Ichigo and his friends in the palace, prompting Urahara to theorize that they arrived too late. Urahara is shocked as Ukitake starts emitting shadows, prompting him to ask him what he's doing. Surprised by Ukitake saying he's going to replace the Soul King, Urahara asks how this can be done. Hearing Ukitake's explanation of his disease and his connection to Mimihagi, he notes that he's heard this name mentioned before to refer to a god from the outskirts of Rukongai. Urahara listens to Ukitake explaining Mimihagi's status as the Soul King's right hand and how he has sacrificed himself to Mimihagi to become that right hand man himself. When Yuhowak manages to absorb Mimihagi, Urahara witnesses Mimihagi being forcibly pulled out of Ukitake and notes that it's being absorbed before looking on in shock at Yuhowak's beam of darkness that strikes Shakunmaku, creating a veil of darkness over the Serete. Several dark creatures start coming from the sky attacking. Soon, a bound Aizen is brought there by Kyoraku. He proceeds to destroy the creatures by exerting his Ryatsu and utilizing high-level Kido, prompting Urahara to note that his power must have grown whilst he was imprisoned. While running down the street with Shunsui Kyoraku, Kisuke feels Mayuri's Ryatsu tremble, but is confident that he'll be fine when Shunsui asks him. When Shunsui reports that the other Ryatsu are disappearing, Kisuke asks him if all the vice captains have been defeated, but is told that Renji, Rukia, Hinamori, and Nanao are still out with them. Kisuke and the others eventually reach the upper levels of the city, but Gerard Valkyrie jumps towards them from far away and Kisuke comments on the jump. The Shinigami then confront Gerard. Kisuke departs from the group as they battle Gerard and heals the fallen Grimjow. He then appears behind Yoroichi as she's being cornered by Askin Naklavar, injecting an immunity strengthening drug into her rear end. Yoroichi kicks Kisuke in the chin and then expresses surprise when Askin addresses him by name, but Askin says that he just remembered Kisuke being one of the five special war powers. Suddenly, Yoroichi jumps into the air due to Kisuke's drug taking effect, and Kisuke tells her that the effect will only last five minutes since the drug was rushed. Yoroichi activates Shunko, Raijin, Senkai, but Kisuke suggests she use another transformation, but Yoroichi immediately refuses. Kisuke dodges an attack which Asken shoots at him, and as Yoroichi is cornered by Asken again, Kisuke reveals that he can make her transform by peeling off a paper. He does so, forcing Yoroichi to activate Shunko, Raiju Senkei, Shunryo Kokubyo Senkai. Kisuke tells Asken the name of the technique, making him realize that Yoroichi cannot understand him. As Yoroichi overpowers Asken, Kisuke reveals to the Quincy that Yoroichi was overcoming his immunity due to the mood of her Ryatsu changing 48 times per second. Yoroichi blasts Asken away with a big bolt of Ryatsu, and Kisuke calls her over to him. Yoroichi licks him and rests on his lap as Kisuke reflects on her form and promises to cure her of the poison in her body once he confirms Asken is dead. Suddenly, Kisuke and Yoroichi are engulfed by Asken's Gift Ball Deluxe, and Kisuke looks in shock as he sees Asken with his Quincy Volstandig activated. After noting that spending one second in his Quincy Volstandig would expose him to all 48 different types of Ryatsu, Asken reveals that this technique allows him to adapt to changes in the properties of poison and claims that neither Urahara nor Yoroichi will be able to harm him now. 
Askin asks Urahara if he has any more tricks up his sleeve while erecting a gift biraik around his gift ball deluxe, which he claims is impossible to escape. When Urahara points out that he does not appear to be acting purely of loyalty, Askin admits that he's interested in seeing what Yuhawak creates after destroying all three realms and claims Urahara is too, prompting Urahara to attack him while stating that Mayuri would be more intrigued by this, but only if he could shape it himself. Grinning, Askin throws a gift ring at Urahara, who loses both eyes to it, and explains how it focuses all of the death dealing into one point in order to force an instant death upon that point, before claiming that doing this to all of Urahara's internal organs is the only way to kill him. However, Askin is surprised when Urahara activates his Bankai, Kanambiraki Benihime Aratame. When Askin admits that he does not have any intel on his Bankai, Urahara states that this is the first time he's used it in front of the Quincy's, prompting Askin to wonder what kind of power it possesses. Urahara points out how this is a very personal question before telling Askin that he will be experiencing its power soon enough, as Askin's arm is suddenly split open. As Askin leaps back, his arm is sewn up, prompting Urahara to praise him for realizing that his Bankai has a range, before revealing that its power is to restructure anything it touches as the hands of it repair his eyes. Slashing Askin across the chest, Urahara turns around and crosses blades with him as Askin expresses surprise at Urahara being able to see. Urahara restructures his other hand and grasps his sword before sending Askin flying through several buildings. However, Askin manages to recover and laments how this is turning into a battle of brute force before increasing the power of his gift ball deluxe to incapacitate Urahara. As Askin admits that he does not want to deal with Urahara's Bankai, Urahara notes that he forgot one thing as Askin is impaled by a hand through his chest. Pointing out how Askin never said his gift Birike was impenetrable, Urahara reveals that he made a path inside and thanks Grimjow, who crushes Askin's heart in his hand. Urahara reveals to the incapacitated Askin that he healed Grimjow because he thought the Holoriatsu might be useful during the battle, explaining to the confounded Askin that he always thinks of many possible scenarios that could happen. Askin calls this extreme, but Urahara replies that this is a fight for survival, and he aims to game the best odds. Grimjow impales Askin again and states that their agreement is complete, and the air suddenly grows thicker. Askin reveals that the power of his gift ball deluxe is magnifying as he dies, noting that Urahara has no strength to escape it. Urahara and his Bankai marionette collapse as he apologizes to Ichigo and Rukia for leaving everything in their hands. New Breathes from Hell Arc 12 years after Ichigo defeated Yuhuak, Urahara started helping the Gotei 13 technologically advance in many ways, such as introducing them to televisions that could play shows from the human world. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.